This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, welcome to the final episode on incisions. In this chapter, we'll discuss the anatomy of the incisions and understand the triplanar, the biplanar and the monoplanar incisions. Having discussed the feature of the perfect incision in the previous episodes, let me demonstrate how a poor incision would look like. Now let's have a look at this incision, operated elsewhere many months back. Now what are the things which I don't appreciate? Now this is the external entry and this is the internal entry. The external incision is far away from the limbus in the clear cornea, away from the vascular limbus, hence healing is going to be delayed. The intracorneal tunnel is very short, in fact hardly any. So this wound would not be the most safest nor the most stable one. Moving on to creating the incisions. In order to create the perfect incision, let's observe the actual technique. The globe is stabilized with the ring. Now, typically, my incision is posterior limbal. The incision is based at the conjunctival insertion or 0.5 mm posterior to it. To avoid conjunctival ballooning, I prefer to make a perpendicular partial thickness incision which is slightly bigger than the intended phaco incision. Example, 3 mm groove for a 2.8 mm incision. Of course, there will be some oozing but the visibility can be improved by some gentle irrigation. The 2.8 mm bevel up keratome is being placed in the groove first and the blade is now moved up and forward so that we create an intracorneal tunnel of 2 mm and then the direction of the blade turns just a bit so that the blade now becomes parallel to the surface of the iris. Then it perforates the desmids membrane. Now this is the configuration of the wound which we have and the inner lip is a nice straight line. Let's see a few more cases. The globe is stabilized with the fixation ring. I turn the globe ever so slightly away from me so that I can create an adequate intracorneal tunnel. We can see that the blade is directed now more anteriorly as it is traversing the corneal stroma. Then the direction changes ever so slightly so that the plane of the blade now becomes parallel to the surface of the iris. Now I enter and we have a perfect intracorneal tunnel with a straight inner lip. Now in this case I am stabilizing the globe with the side port instrument. The tunnel is initially created. There is a slight pause, change the direction of the blade and then we enter. So we now have a perfect square or slightly rectangular shaped incision with a good intracorneal tunnel and a straight internal lip. In all these cases, we need to note that there were three different planes at which we were working. First there is an initial vertical groove, then the intracorneal tunnel and then there is a slight change in the plane to bring the blade parallel to the iris before perforating the desmids and entering the antechamber. So this is the classical triplanar incision. Of course this can't be appreciated in this two dimensional picture but how about looking at the OCT picture. Now since we can see the cross sectional image, the characteristics of the triplanar incision can be very well appreciated. So this is the first vertical plane that is the initial partial thickness groove. Then this is the second plane as the blade traverses intracorneally and obliquely giving us the intracorneal tunnel. And finally there is a change in the plane, the third plane as the blade changes direction before entering the antechamber. Another similar OCT scan showing the triplanar nature of the incision. Let me remind you now that in the quest of a triplanar incision, we should refrain from using the dimple down technique as has been elaborated in the previous episodes which gives rise to the chevron shape internal lip which is not ideal. So one needs to be careful and avoid the dimple down technique. Of course we do have the other variants of the biplanar and the monoplanar incisions. In the biplanar incision the initial groove is present and the blade traverses obliquely creating the tunnel and then enters the antechamber directly. So let's examine this incision through the OCT. There is this initial plane of vertical incision and then a straight line traverses across the corneal stroma without changing any direction before entering the antechamber. And lastly, we'll have a monoplanar incision 
where there is no initial perpendicular groove the sharp keratome just traverses through the cornea creating an intracorneal tunnel and without any change in direction of the blade it enters the antechamber if we have a reasonable amount of intracorneal tunnel all the configurations whether it's a monoplanar biplanar or a triplanar will all work equally well but my personal preference has always been to do the triplanar incision because i feel it is much more secure Before I conclude I'd like to mention about another technique used to make an incision which I call the wriggling technique I've seen many of my friends use this technique but personally I've not been a great fan of it This was the brief summary on how to create a triplanar corneal incision and also understand the biplanar and the other variants Thank you so much for watching and hope you found this helpful